All right. As I stated before, we're going to do a set of quick tutorials here on saving, and I'm not going to go into the information. So if you don't understand what I'm doing, make sure that you check out the associated linked videos. Now, the issue with saving in Photoshop, there's a whole bunch of different ways. There are some ways that are definitely better than others, but it really kind of depends on what you're doing. So I'm gonna run you through all the steps of saving. Now, one thing that you must understand before you save is you need to pre-size and configure all your files before you actually save them. Now, some of these steps, it's integrated. Some of these steps, it's not integrated. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to save in Adobe Photoshop. Now the first one is the one that I never use and it is located right over here. And we actually need to set this one up first. So we're gonna go to export and then over here on export, it says export preferences. And this is gonna take you into your preferences in Photoshop and you'll notice right here, you can pick the type of file, makes more sense because this is just a quick or export, something that you might upload to your phone or social media. It's giving you a quality and note, it only lets you go up to seven, not 12. So the resolution is not gonna be quite as good if you use this and that's the number one reason I don't use this. You have your choice of ask where to export each time or to export files to an assets folder next to the current document. So it's basically gonna put it in with the document where you originally opened it. Do you want to quick export the metadata and you have none or copyright and contact info? Do you wanna convert it to sRGB? And just if you don't know what this means, if you're saving to the web, yes. And you would simply hit okay. All you would need to do is then go up here to file, drop down to export, quick export as JPEG, boom, it's gonna be saved. I can rename it, I'll just call this test, and I'm gonna hit save, and boom, just like that, you're done. The whole process is done. Now the problem with this is, it doesn't size the image. If you want to size the image, and you can see right down here, I have a very large file. This is gonna be much too large for anything on the internet. You would need to go in and size your image. So let's go ahead and take a look at sizing so you can apply that before you use that quick export as. Now there's multiple ways to size. There's a couple, one easy one. You're gonna go up to image, image size, and right here you're gonna pick all of your information. So. You can pick your width, your height, your resolution. You can do it in inches. You can do it in pixels. In this case, I'll just do pixels and we'll do 2000 pixels. I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna resize that image. You can see it made it smaller. And now when I go up here to file, export as quick JPEG, it's just gonna give me this. I'm gonna do test and boom, just like that, it's done. That's all you would need to do to save that file. So let's go ahead and undo that. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at another way to size your image. You're gonna come up here to the crop tool. And what you wanna do for this one is you wanna click on the little box right here. And this is gonna give you different options. And what you wanna do is WHN resolution, or you can pick from one of the pre-designed crop sets right here. You would input how you wanted this to be saved. So you can see right now, this is gonna be saved at 12 inches by nine inches by 200 pixels per inch. I would apply that crop and then I could go file, export, save as JPEG. We'll do S3 and boom, just like that, we've saved that image. The last way to size an image is to go over here to image size and that's gonna bring up your same window before. We'll add that 2000 pixels in there, hit okay. And then you would simply go file, export, export as JPEG. Now you can use those different sizing options for multiple options that I'm gonna be showing here on Photoshop. Option number two to save is very similar. You're gonna to go to file and you're gonna to go to export, but this time you're gonna to go to export as, and you'll notice that under export as, you have a whole bunch of different options. 
So I made this window large just so you can see it and we'll go ahead and make this 100% so you can see how big this image is. And what we have here is the export as window. Over here we have the different file types that we can save as. So we can do a PNG, a JPEG or a GIF in this instance. We have quality settings and in this case we can go all the way up to seven again. We have the image size, the scale, how we want to resample it, canvas size, which is a little bit different than image size. So don't accidentally use canvas size. Do you want to add your metadata? Do you want to convert to sRGB? And do you want to embed a color profile? The first thing I'm going to do is resize my image. Remember we were doing 2000 pixels per inch. So we'll just go ahead and put 2000 pixels per inch. If you don't understand pixels, that's something that you definitely want to spend some time looking at. And we'll go ahead and hit tab. That's going to automatically resize the image and convert that. We don't need to worry about canvas size. I want to add my metadata, but if you don't, you can hit none. You do want to convert to sRGB if this is going to the web. I had this at Adobe RGB. Do you want to embed your color profile, which would be this? Absolutely, you do. And you would simply just go ahead and hit export. This would come up. We're going to hit and boom, just like that, we're done. That option, you get all the sizing options available as well. So I definitely like that one better just because it's kind of like a one step do all. All right, the next one is file export. And you'll notice we've got save for web legacy. This is the old way of what we just did. And it was really slow and convoluted and it took a long time. Basically, you've got the same type of window. I'll make this bigger so everybody can see it. Up here, you have presets. So if you wanted to design a preset, you could do that. We're not going to in this case. We can change this to a JPEG. We want our quality to be, in this case, it's gonna let us go up to 100% like it didn't before. How do you want it to be saved? So optimized, do we wanna embed the color profile? Yes. Convert to sRGB? Yes. All this stuff got our copyright, or we could do all the information here if we wanted. We're gonna take our image size and make that 2000 pixels, just like we've done every time before, and we're ready to go. So that's the process. You would come down here, hit save. It's gonna give you the window. So test or boom, just like that, we've done it again. They got rid of the save legacy as, but people probably complained, so they've left it. And so now you have legacy and export. The next method to save is, first of all, we need to size our image. So we're gonna go ahead and go to image size. We'll just do the basic 2000 pixels, hit okay. We're gonna come down here, and this time we need to convert our color profile manually because we're not gonna have that option. So we will go to edit, convert to profile. We want sRGB, we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna go to file. And you have your choice of save as or save as a copy. And a lot of people have watched my video tutorial as to why Adobe created and makes you save as a copy now. So we're gonna go ahead and go to save as a copy. And the reason for this was, if you had a JPEG, it kind of solved the problem of accidentally overriding your file and making it really small and ruining your original image. Whatever the method is, if you wanna get rid of it, you can go into the preferences and turn off the legacy options and go back to the save as a copy. Um, I have a video on it. You feel free to watch it if that's something that you wanna do. Under this method, remember we sized and did our profile. We're just gonna simply pick our format. We're embedding that. We're gonna hit okay. We'll make this test five, hit save. This, in this case, we want to apply our JPEG options, we'll hit okay, and we're done. Just like that, 2000 pixels, we've saved. Now, that was save as a copy. If you wanna do save as, in my case, it will let us do that. However, if you don't turn off the legacy options, it won't let you do save as a JPEG, it will let you do save as a PSD. So let's hit cancel. We're gonna go up here to Photoshop preferences. All right, once you are in the preferences, you're gonna go down here to file handling 
and you'll see I've already enabled mine, but it says enable legacy save as. This will allow you to save as a JPEG. You just wanna make sure that is selected. If you don't, you won't be able to use save as. Save as is really exactly the same as save as a copy, except for it doesn't add the little copy to it. So in this case, we'll do test six and save and let's change that. You don't wanna use progressive and save. And that's how you save using file save as. And the last method for saving is using an action. Now an action is something that you're gonna have to create. If you're interested in using an action, I will link my video to how to save as an action. In this case, what I've done is I've created this action that will automatically size whether it's vertical or horizontal. So right here are my actions. And we've got a horizontal, a vertical, and then this is the conditional action that we'll save for other one. Notice I've got a quick key associated with it, F1. So that what this is going to do is it's going to size the image, it's going to convert it to sRGB, and it's gonna send it to save as. And all I need to do is click that, it's gonna run through a process, and boom, just like that, it's ready to go. So test seven, and I can hit save, and good. And just like that, you're done. All right, and the last thing that you can do to an action is you can actually get them to do a whole bunch of different things to them. And in this case, if I want to add a copyright or a watermark to my image, I could do it. Now this watermark is really teeny tiny small, but it will make sense. So let's go ahead, we're gonna click on this. This is the conditional watermark. I'm gonna hit it, it will run through the process and then it will save that. So we'll do test seven, hit okay, hit okay. And it's very hard to see, but right down here, you can see we've got that watermark added to that file. Now, if I wanted to make that big and huge, I could definitely do that. But in this case, when I was creating them, I just wanted a little small one. Those are all the different ways in which I know to save in Adobe Photoshop. Hopefully it was quick enough and to the point. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. Don't forget that I have links to longer videos, if you need more information, you can always join the Facebook group. I have the link down in the description that will allow you to upload images so I can actually see what you're doing. A lot of issues, people comment because things aren't working, but usually unless I can see what you're doing, it's very difficult to give you any information. <laughs>